All right, so for this video, I wanna give you guys a little walkthrough of what's included in Sync Academy and why it's such an awesome platform. So this is gonna be helpful for those of you that are not in Sync Academy that might wanna see what are the benefits, what would be in it for you if you actually joined us. And actually, even those of you that are in Sync Academy, you guys should definitely watch this video because there might be some features in Sync Academy that you weren't aware of and you're not currently taking advantage of. So I wanna make sure that everybody is very aware of all the great things that are happening inside of this cool platform, okay? First of all, it is a web platform and it's a mobile app, okay? So it's our exclusive private social media platform. So imagine you're accessing your own essential uh, Facebook platform, essentially, where it's only just about sync licensing though, okay? No political posts, no posting pictures of your meal, right? We don't do anything other than just talk about how to succeed and how to stay motivated with the TV film sync licensing business, okay? So that's what's really awesome about having this kind of a platform at your fingertips. But when you log in and you become a member, um, there's obviously the main feed here where a lot of the times we basically are giving each other motivation, encouragement, inspiration, all that kind of stuff. Also asking questions um, and sometimes just talking about how bummed out we're feeling or how we're not really feeling about, um, we're not really feeling very motivated to be making music or we're just kind of frustrated with our current um, uh, situation in the industry. And that's what this is for. And I encourage all of you guys that are Sync Academy members to post both of your successes, which many of you guys do when you hit those milestones or you get accepted by a library, and also your frustrations of what's really getting in the way, what are the questions, where's the confusion point, uh, what are the fears that you're really going for. The more that we really communicate and uh, bring all that stuff to this platform, the more we can really help each other, okay? Uh, some, some people ask, Jesse, are you even really active? I am the most active member actually in Sync Academy. Many of you guys have posted and seen that I am actually one of the first to comment on many of your guys' posts. So I am religiously logging in, checking your guys' comments um, and, and reading basically what's going on in here and obviously adding my two cents when I feel that I can really be useful for you guys. And please, what I do encourage you guys, if you are Sync Academy members, always post your questions publicly here on the main feed so that all of us, all members can actually get benefit um, from the answer. I, I, most of the time for me, I'm learning so much about this industry from you guys and what you're seeing out there being a newcomer to the business. So the more that you're able to be vocal and put that stuff out here on this platform, the better I'll be educated about this, the better I can help you guys, and also the better we can all really benefit from sharing this knowledge with each other, okay? So this is a success story I got from one of my students uh, recently, so I was definitely um, giving him some props there. And obviously you can see we have a very um, encouraging and active uh, group here that really like to give each other like high fives and, and sort of way to goes, you know. Um, this is another member that actually got a placement, first placement, which is really cool. Um, and we have people that, you know, ask questions. You obviously can ask questions. We have members that are gonna answering. I will as well. Uh, a lot of people are looking to meet up in person. I obviously encourage that if you want to. I don't, you know, make anybody meet up if they don't want to, but if you wanna meet up with people, in real life, you can have private conversations with people here on the platform to meet up with them. We've had many members actually that collaborate in real life, not just online. So you can obviously do that. You can post a question, like I said before, if you're having some questions about how to proceed with any particular aspect of sync licensing. As you can see here was the first one and I uh, responded to that one first. So I am very active here. <clears throat> And just a really cool thing uh, happening here. Now, one of the main reasons why people like to join Sync Academy is for the feedback that they, they can get from the fellow members here in the community. So I'm gonna show you guys, if you're a current member and you haven't been taking advantage of this, how to find that, okay? So on the left side of the page here, whether you're on the app, mobile app, or if you're on the desktop version, you can click on groups. And you're gonna see the actual three groups that we have here. We have the syndicate, that's my private mentorship group. I'm not currently accepting new applications, so please don't try to join that. Um, I will let you guys know when we have some open spots, but I like to keep this a manageable number so I can give everybody individual attention, okay? I can't just let everybody join that, even though I have a lot of pending uh, requests right now. So just hang tight, I'll let you guys know when I have some open spots. But here's the feedback corner. This is the important part that you guys need to be aware of. When you want to post a track, to get feedback from your fellow Sync Academy members to understand, are you on track? Is there something you can improve? Um, and just sort of get that immediate sort of um, sense of that you're doing something either the right way or maybe not the right way. Uh, this is where you can post that. What I do recommend you guys do and I require you guys to do is definitely click on this featured post. This is the guidelines um, for how I recommend you guys interact and post through the, um, the feedback corner. I wanna make sure that this stays positive and productive. I don't want certain members spamming the feed with you know 60 different tracks in one week. So we have some very um, well thought out guidelines here. Very simple, nothing complex, but just to make sure that we're all respecting this platform, we're all getting some value out of it. And also we're all contributing it to this, to this platform, okay? I don't want some members to just come in and get the feedback, get the feedback, but never give feedback to other members. So I wanna make sure we are all being very, um, 
helpful to each other in this uh, feedback corner, okay? And this is obviously a very uh, active part of SIG Academy. There are tons and tons of tracks that get uploaded here um, every single day and every single week. So this is something you guys should be taking advantage of, but make sure you do post your tracks here in this um, group, not on the main Sync Academy feed. I wanna make sure you guys are aware of that, okay? So that's the feedback corner. Obviously, if you want to collaborate, let's say you're a singer and you want to look for a producer to collaborate or you're a producer, you're a hip hop producer and you want to collaborate with maybe somebody who does rock so you guys can do some 50-50 stuff. I've had many members actually collaborate and get into each other's libraries that way. So that's one way you can actually expand your network in the sync licensing business is to go to our collaborations group and post what you're looking for, what you're interested in, put some music up there so people can understand what you're really all about and then they can decide if they want to reach out to you and start working with you. I've had many members actually get their foot into multiple libraries this way. So it's one of those things where you can do 100% on your own and submit to new libraries. But the other thing you can do, there might be another member in Sync Academy that's already got a relationship with a library, but they need, like I said, rock guitars on top of their hip hop drums. You might be that, that X factor, that perfect partner for them to create a full album together. You get your 50% cut, they take their 50% cut, and you guys move into that library together. So there's a really cool opportunity there for those of you that want to start networking and collaborating and getting um, your hands on some, um, some great opportunities that way. Now, courses, of course, this is one of the biggest reasons why a lot of you guys want to be in Sync Academy and are in Sync Academy. On the left panel here, of course, you see courses, right? So there are basically three uh, categories of courses that you can access at this point. And I guarantee you by the end of 2020, there, this will grow and the, the tutorials within each one of these will be growing month by month, okay? So the first one is a Sync Academy tutorial. So I'll talk about that last. That's basically where the 100 plus hours of how to produce, mix, and master, and we have some business tutorials are uh, included, okay? So there's a lot of stuff to go through there. I'm gonna give you a quick overview at the end of this. Then we have our plugins and palettes. So that's the course that I just released a few weeks ago. This gives you basically the secret sauce for myself and two other professional sync licensing producers. We're giving you uh, all of the recommendations for the samplers, the plugins, the sounds, everything that we use in our tracks that get accepted and get placed on TV. So no longer do you have to worry about where do you, you get your sounds, what you, should, what you should be using. These are all proven, these have been um, used by professional sync licensing producers. And below each tutorial, there's actually going to be, um, I'll actually show you all the, the, I think there's six tutorials. There's actually gonna be direct links to each um, plugin and um, tutorial, um, or plugin and sampler, or whatever it might be, uh, beneath each, each video, okay? So it's broken up into these uh, six different uh, categories right here. So no affiliate uh, links at all. So these are just 100% honest recommendations from what we actually have in our sessions. And that's exactly what you're getting with that, including an overview of how we actually use um, each individual plugin and get a sound from it very quickly okay so really valuable stuff there sync 60 challenge some of you guys have participated with us even just here on youtube but sync 60 is where we have our um eight weekly videos that i've uh, included for all um sync academy members now we do this collectively two to three times a year but you obviously don't have to wait for us as a collective group to get started let's say you need to get a full album done to submit to a library and you know you need some sort of structure and guidance for it just come to sync 60 challenge go through week by week. We have a, um, um, an Excel sheet that you can download. You can fill out your weekly goals, week one, week two, week three, et cetera. Each time when you finish your goal, you put yes, you map the whole thing out. And so by the end of the eight weeks, the 60 days, you've got either your full album done or maybe two albums done, however ambitious you feel you can be. And you can use this for any goal that you want to achieve. Maybe you want to just upgrade and update your sound um, palette that you're using, or maybe you want to just improve your mixing or mastering skills. It really doesn't matter. There's no goal that's too small, but this is a, a very scientifically and researched um, strategy that I put together, a structure essentially, for you to be able to use and follow anytime you'd like to, okay? So make sure you do take advantage of that when you want to set your own 60 goal, okay? 60 day goal. And of course, last but not least, let's get into those tutorials because I know many of you guys want these tutorials and should be taking advantage of them, especially if you already are uh, a Sync Academy uh, member. So when you come to the uh, landing page here, you'll see that we have all these different categories, okay? So we have the basics, hip hop, rock, right? It goes through all the different categories. This is my producing, mixing, and mastering course. I released it a few, uh, a few years ago, but this is extensive. I think this is over 20 hours of content of me basically creating a track from scratch using nothing but what comes with Logic Pro 10. Okay, so I'm not using any external third-party plugins or anything fancy, but I'm creating a licensable, high-quality track just with the stuff that comes with Logic. So you guys get to follow along for my entire creative process and then how I mix and master the entire thing and produce the alt mixes and the stems and all the stuff I have to do for deliverables, okay? Uh, we have some sound design tutorials so you can create your own sounds, create your own leads, that kind of a thing, right? 
business skills, very, very important subject. So we talk about registration, submitting the libraries, um, uh, copyrights, uh, metadata, you name it, anything that has to do with the sort of business marketing side of your career in the sync licensing business, we cover it there. And then we also have our Q&A videos. So occasionally we've done some exclusive Q&A videos only here in Sync Academy that you can always access those afterwards. They were recorded live. Many of you guys participated participated with us live. You can watch those afterwards. But here's what I recommend. So if you're new to Sync Academy or you've never even, you haven't dived into any of these um, tutorials, go to Music Licensing Basics. It's the first category right here. Just click on it. What you're gonna see, I'm gonna actually move my webcam and thing out of the way so that you can actually see what I'm doing here. So what you're gonna do is actually, as you scroll down, um, you're gonna see all the tutorials, the basic tutorials that I think you should basically go from the top of this page to the very bottom. I think just this alone will completely set you up for much more success than you would have if you didn't think about these things. Some of these are, these sort of in-between topics that you just can't find a Google search for. You you can't type this stuff in and find anybody that's really even talking about these subjects and really getting you that sort of edge on the competition and getting you to stand out in this industry. Because yes, there are a lot of people jumping into this business and trying to be successful. But with these kind of skills that you have now with these tutorials, you can actually really separate yourself very quickly, okay? So the first one, I did release this one on YouTube, which is obviously number one, is you gotta decide which genre you're gonna specialize in. So I, I create this sort of a whole um, PowerPoint presentation on how to nail that down, how to determine which genre will be the most profitable for you, which one can land in a long-term career for you that you won't get burned out in a couple of years, right? So obviously that's the first. How to name your track, so important here. Many producers spend you know two, three days or even a week on a track, and when it comes down to naming it, they just type it like an emotional day which doesn't mean anything. Like emotional day means, could mean that you got your heart broken by your girlfriend. It could mean that you got a job promotion. It could mean that, you know, your, your parents died. It could mean anything. An emotional day does not categorize or specifically market your track for anything. So in this um, uh, tutorial, I'm gonna basically show you the secrets for how I make sure that I have a very clear and precise uh, track title that shows a clear emotional uh, vibe. And it also uh, is gonna pique the curiosity of anybody that wants to potentially license your music because the first thing they'll see about anything that you're putting out there, they're not gonna hear your track before they see the track title. So the track title is really like your packaging. You really gotta make sure you take some time and think about that um, and be a little bit smarter about how you're um, presenting yourself and marketing yourself within a library's catalog, okay? So in this one, I'm gonna show you a lot of my tracks that have been licensed and been successfully uh, distributed out there. So you actually get some examples. So I practice what I preach. I'm not just telling you guys this stuff out of theory. Okay, we talk about uh, analyzing a reference track to understand when you get a track that you wanna follow in the footsteps with, not just taking it a quick listen and going, okay, let me try something like that, but literally breaking it apart, track by track, uh, part by part, instrument by instrument, and also the structure of the track. And really, I, I give you my guidelines for how I create the blueprint before I start creating a track that follows in the footsteps of a reference track. So this this is really helpful stuff for you. You're gonna have to do this all the time in sync licensing, so you better get good at it now, especially if you're new to the business. Uh, how to emulate that reference track. We obviously talk a little bit more about how to do that in detail. How to create interest throughout the track so your track doesn't get boring and, and stale and it just kind of sounds like it's looping. We talk about some strategies to make sure you do that quickly, not having to reinvent the wheel, right? Uh, crafting epic chord progressions, having chord progressions that are interesting and not kind of cliche and played out that everybody's already heard a million times. How to avoid too much looping. Again, another one just like that, creating interest. Crafting interesting and memorable leads. I've seen many tracks and given a lot of feedback on tracks that have, you know, an okay sounding thing going on, but then when it comes down to the lead they put in the chorus, it's very boring, it's very plain, and I've heard it a thousand times, so it's not actually pulling me along for the ride. So we talk about some ways to make sure that your tracks um, have some great leads that can hook people, okay? Creating modern uh, synth leads, creating epic buildups, how to create a definite hit ending. You always have to have usually um, a hit ending. You don't wanna have any fade outs at the end of your track. So we talk about how to make sure you can do that in many different creative ways. Uh, and here's some examples of those button endings. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that. How to get your kick and snare to punch through the mix. Usually a lot of producers have a lot of problems with this where their, their, their drums, it doesn't matter what genre they're in, their drums just don't really punch through the mix. So we talk about some great ways to be able to do that to provide that epic uh, energy because so much about sync licensing is about the rhythm and the feel of your track if it makes somebody feel good. And if your drums are not punching through and giving that good feeling um, throughout the mix, it's just not gonna be competitive in this business. So it's one of those key fundamental things you really gotta get down. Quantizing drums, some kind of basic things. That's, believe it or not, there's a big issue that a lot of people have uh, problems with with their drums. Their drums just feel a little bit off timing. So I just talk about some quick, easy, down and dirty uh, examples and ways that I make sure that my tracks are really um, staying on key but not feeling too robotic because that's a big thing that a lot of people get in, uh, stuck with when they quantize their drums. Minimal cue basics, so if you're doing something in a minimal 
fashion that only has a couple of tracks, right? Getting your track loud enough, that's a big one. It's one of the most popular uh, uh, tutorials here. How to make sure that your tracks are actually going to be on par with the competition out there. So I actually walk you through, sorry, I'm punching my mic here. I'm walking you through my personal max mis mixing and mastering techniques to make sure that my tracks are on par with the competition. We, we talk about creating those alt mixes, cut downs, which you'll definitely have to do. Uh, delivering mastered versus unmastered stems. You might have different libraries that want either one. Credit, creating metadata, very, very important. If you have a library that's asking for metadata, do you know how to do that to make sure your track um, is going to be searchable so people are gonna be able to find your music, right? Uh, we talk about how to overcome writer's block. These are sort of my key ways that I do this. If I ever hit writer's block, it might be helpful for you. Files and session organization, right? Staying organized so you can find your samples, you can find your um, your your templates, you can find your uh, loops and your samples. We obviously have it broken up into two different um, <clears throat> Uh, tutorials here. So those are really valuable. Uh, this is one of mine where I talked to you about how I create three cues in one session. So a lot of times in licensing, you're going to be asked to deliver five cues in like two days. Well, one way you can do that is actually stack up multiple tracks within one session. Um, and I show you exactly how I do it. And I do this all the time. This is not something I do once in a while. Almost every time I have a large number of, of cues that I have to deliver for one of my clients, I always go to this uh, technique. So definitely you should check this one out. Well, we talk more about nailing uh, minimal cues. This is a chat I had with a couple of other members. We talk about submission mistakes for libraries. Of course, a couple of our other syndicate members that have had some success getting accepted. So we talk about what their failures were before they got accepted and what they did differently to get accepted. So really good stuff. TuneFind, this is also another one that I released to you guys here on YouTube. So you guys have probably seen that one about how to use TuneFind and how to um, put that to use for your licensed career if you want to. Side chaining techniques, which are very common in a lot of EDM, dance, and even also some orchestral uh, applications. So we want to make sure that here, it was here in the basics. And then of course, how to score to a video file. So if somebody gives you the temp video file for an ad campaign, do you know how to import that and uh, properly compose a track alongside of that video file, okay? So obviously, a very exhaustive list, and that is just topic one. That is just the first section, okay? So each one of these has an extensive list of tutorials that you're actually gonna be able to get um, access to. Let me just show you some of the business skills ones. I know that this is a really popular one. I think most of you guys who are in Sync Academy probably haven't even watched a lot of these, so I wanna make sure you guys do watch these. Okay, so it starts off with the business skills for musician series. I have released these on YouTube. So if you haven't seen them though, you can definitely get them here, or you can search my YouTube channel. Very important stuff, just key stuff to make sure you have common sense business skills getting into this business, okay? So we talk about getting accepted by music libraries, how to craft the perfect library pitch, getting through tough times, uh, getting paid for ad commercials, uh, future trends in music licensing, what we see coming down the pipeline, tracking your placements with TuneSat to make sure you understand and see where your tracks are getting some play and some action out there, avoiding common mistakes in licensing, uh, loops, how do you use you lose, use loops, uh, do's and don'ts, nailing the licensing brief. When you get a brief, how do you understand it? How do you interpret it? How do you actually nail it and make sure you give them something that they really could use? How to stay productive. We talk about with, uh, we, we had this chat with many members actually about what they do to stay productive because I'm not the end all be all expert on all things. So I always like to invite my members actually for a lot of these chats to, uh, to give their insights and their tips, which is very, very awesome. Uh, how long do you have to wait until you can actually get full-time income? We talk about some real-world examples for what you should be expecting moving forward. Setting and achieving goals, secrets of a music library owner. We actually have a music library owner that talks about how he runs his music library and how he accepts new writers and what he's looking for when he accepts somebody so you get an understanding of how to best serve music libraries. Checking your PRO track registrations when you get your tracks accepted by a library. Are you making sure you're logging in and getting your royalties? It's a really crucial thing. How a music editor makes his selection. This is one of our Sync Academy pros, Mike Gennato, that was a Netflix music editor, and he talked about his entire process for how he was selecting which music got into which trailer for Netflix that he was doing. So really cool stuff there. Uh, this is another one you guys have had access to, exclusive versus non-exclusive libraries with my personal strategies. How and when to set up a music publishing company. Some of you guys want to know, is it best to set it up now? Should I wait until I have opportunities that allow me to collect that publishing income? All of those questions are answered here with this one. Uh, if you want to be earning uh, income from ad placements, you should probably be watching this one to make sure you understand what you're maybe m missing out on or what you could be missing out on if you don't know this stuff, okay? How to theme, market, and title your production music album for a library. Very important stuff. Uh, Q&A with a music library owner. You guys got part one of that here on YouTube, but I actually have part two, which is another 35 or 45 minutes with a library owner. So we have uh, much more going in there. And then last but not least, we have a structure of a production music library. So this is these are the music libraries you're submitting to. If you want to learn how they're set up, what their needs are, what are the sort of uh, the complications and the priorities that they have as a company, which will basically help you best serve them to understand where they're coming from, right? You really 
empathize with where they are, this is the stuff that you really need to get your hands on, okay? And this library of tutorials grows every single month. I don't really publicize it too much, but every single month I actually add at least three to five brand new um, uh, tutorials from myself and from our other Sync Academy pros. So, and we got some new ones coming up for, uh, for the new year. We definitely have um, one from Edmund Red. He was actually one of our great orchestral trailer um, uh, teachers here in, uh, in Sync Academy. He did the first, I think it was the five or six of them. Um, but a world-class composer, A-level placements, really, really high quality uh, stuff. And he put together some awesome tutorials for us. And he's coming back to do a couple more for us in the new year. So I'm very excited about that. But that's what you can essentially look forward to when you're a member of Sync Academy is encouragement, motivation, sharing knowledge, learning new things, diving into all these little subjects as you can see in this video. There's just not enough time to get into every single one of those in a blog post. They are all very in-depth, they take a long time to explain, but it's all very important for you to go through one by one and understand this stuff. Of course, at the end of every tutorial, you can click a little button that says completed, so you obviously can track your progress as you get through all of these tutorials. But you can watch them anytime you want. You don't have to just watch them one time and then you know you, you forget about it later. You can come back and revisit at any one of those if you want to. And of course, if you have questions about any of them or anything that's going on in the sync licensing world, right here on your main page, you just click on his on this. You can ask a question. You can um, you know comment on something. You can basically share your perspective on anything like that. So I want to encourage all of you guys that are Sync Academy members to keep doing what you're doing, keep that awesome participation happening. And if you're not doing it, please start doing it to make this an even more powerful and positive place to be. If you guys have any questions about Sync Academy, about becoming a member or being a member right now, if there's anything you're confused about, just comment below on this video or email me, jesse at syncmymusic.com. Thank you guys so much for watching.